roof. Boom! What up, ladies and gents? It's Friday. It's the end of the week. And we're having some fun here for some Wu-Tang. Getting some clarity. I'm not much of a coffee drinker, but for those of you who are, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. So let's get this show on the road. Here we go. Shut up and sit down. The Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business and social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. Yeah, let's do this thing, ladies and gents. All right, we got a little bit of a, of a different thing. I got no James today, so I get to kind of run a little bit of a fire intro. So here we go. Today's guest, his mission is to deliver a morning coffee experience that is invigorating yet, yet soothing while providing natural energy and nutrients that need to start your day off right. He needed something, some coffee that was healthy enough for everybody, including himself, who along with 30 other million Americans suffer from this thing called heart disease. And after suffering two heart attacks by the age of 21, he made a life of health and longevity his mission. So welcome to the show today, Trenton Hudson. What up, my brother? What's happening, man? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Yeah, man, no problem, no problem. I, you know what, dude? I'm all by my lonesome. I didn't give you your entrance music. I'll do that one more time. Trenton Hudson. <laughs> There we go. That's sure, how we yeah, do. That, that's, that's how we do. That's what I like. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's do this thing. So uh, let's start off with the obvious, man. Two heart attacks before the age of 21. Tell me what's going on with yeah. you, man. How, how'd you get there? Oh, uh, man. So that was kind of like this completely fluke accident, right? It wasn't a hereditary thing. It wasn't like I'd known that you know, this was a possibility to happen. I didn't have a history of heart issues at all. It was just, you know, one morning I woke up with my right arm kind of in a little bit of pain. Felt like I slept on it wrong. So I just got up and walked it off. Right. And I laid back down, came back. And then this pain kind of spread across my chest into my left arm. And it wasn't, you know, it, it was painful, but it wasn't like excruciating by any means. It was this pain that it, it just felt alarming because it was so different, right? Like your body just mm. kind of knows whenever something is super off and something was super off. So, you know, I go to the ER, <clears throat> sit in the ER for two and a half, three hours probably because, you know, I'm just in there with chest pain. I'm 20 years old. They don't think anything of it, right? So, but they admit me. They run some tests on me. They can't really tell what's going on. Then they, you know, stick the, the catheter in my leg and look inside my heart. And they're like, yeah, you're having a heart attack. And I'm like, well, oh, yeah, yeah. No problem, right? Just random. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Hey, can you can you stop it? They're like, no, no, you can't stop a heart attack. You just got to wait for it to play out. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So I guess this is what this is what I'm doing with my Sunday. All right, no problem. Uh, okay, dude. All right, sitting in a in a hospital bed, like you're just tripping. Like that's it. You just get a heart attack, no problem. You just kind of kind of work through it. What's going in your What's going on in your mind? Was, in your mind? Like, are you calling was, like moms was, or what are you doing? I, I was terrified, man. I was 20 years old, and you know I didn't have any history of heart issues, so. You know, my mind is going so many different places, not knowing what's going to happen. Or, you know, I was in the hospital for like five days and um, mostly just for them to monitor me and, you know, do blood tests nonstop and look at me and watch me, whatever. Um, but, yeah, it was, you know, a lot of uncertainty it was it, it really changes your perspective on life whenever you're 20 years old and you're kind of forced to think about mortality. Right. Because I think, you know, most of us and myself included before this happened, um, you know, I, I didn't think about death at all. And, you know, you know, it's a possibility, but you don't think about it. And I didn't ever think that, <clears throat> you know, this this life that we have is so short and it can be cut short at any second. Right. Mm -hmm. So it kind of you know, changes, changes your perspective, changes your your level of drive and what you want to do with your life and just changes the way you see everything. Um, so, yeah, it was it was every every emotion you can feel. I, I felt it going going through that. Did they ever like at least figure out, give you a diagnosis, like how you got there? Yeah, yeah. So basically, what happened was my heart. I, I have two aneurysms in my LAD, and for anyone listening who maybe you don't know what an aneurysm is, I, I didn't know what it was till I had a heart attack, right? So basically, your artery wall kind of weakens and it expands, so your blood isn't flowing straight through there. Sometimes it can kind of tumble through there and it'll clot. 
So that's what caused each of my heart attacks was, you know, those clotting up. But my, so the bottom half, and that happened in my LAD, which gives blood to the bottom left side of your heart. So that quarter of your heart, the LAD is responsible for that. And the bottom half of my LAD, there's no blood flowing through there anymore. And Whoa. typically that typically that kills you. They literally call the LAD the widow maker. Um, but before I had my first heart attack, my heart started to develop these arteries around it because then I you know, sense that there's this blockage there, you know, the right blood supply is not getting, you know, where it's supposed to be. So <clears throat> this these arteries, they they do their job. And now, you know, I have completely normal heart function and you know, my heart suffered almost no damage from the two heart attacks, which, you know, I'm super blessed for that because when you have a heart attack, um, whatever damage is done, that's permanent. You know, you don't recover from that. You're, you just got to kind of make do, right? So luckily, in my case, there was almost no damage. And uh, my cardiologist and I, last summer, summer 2020, we did pretty much every test in the book. Uh, we did like the CT scan with the 3D model imaging. We did ultrasound with the, the stress test on the treadmill and everything looked amazing. So he basically told me, you know, I think whatever, you know, happened, happened. And I think you're pretty much good to go. So I don't really worry about you. But caffeine gives me chest pain. Everything else, like I'm fine. Like I can play basketball all day long. I can, you know, do this and that. But caffeine, it constricts your arteries a little bit. So for me and you know, other people like me too, that's a little bit of a, little bit of a problem, right? Um, I, I need all the adequate blood flow I can get. So I, uh, bro, you sound like your story is like you're a freaking superhero, bro. You're a mutant. <laughs> like, like you had like an extra, like you're a piece of your heart, which Yo, would normally you know that the widowmaker, right? A piece of your heart that normally kills people. Your heart was like, nah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna end right here. We're just gonna create another pathway for you and like, bro, I'm like, like, well, okay. I'm like yeah, I'm exactly. Like, well, I just heal fast, right? So, yeah, super like. It, it was kind of one of those things. It, it was one in a million chance that that even happens, period. And, and I'm talking about just the heart attack, right? Yeah. And it, it's another one in a million chance to recover from it the way that I did, to have, you know, pretty much nothing happen outside of, you know, whenever the initial moment happened of the blood clot, each of them, right? But aside from mm -hmm. that, like, I haven't really had any issues. So, you know, I got to. That's awesome. Someone's right, looking so... out for me, I guess, man. I don't know. Either, I'm in, I'm yeah, either someone's definitely someone's looking, looking out. out for me, one or the other. I'm now you were born, you were born just genetically superior than the rest of us, dude. That's what happened right there. All right, so I'm Trenton, so far the, the story, <laughs> right? That, yeah, me too. So, all right, so story is so far, you end up having two heart attacks before you're 21, right? And uh, you basically you find out that you're you're a superhuman and you're able to heal yourself. But every superhero has kryptonite, and caffeine seems to be your kryptonite. What's the so deal? Real talk, man. Ca caffeine. So I, I can have a little bit of caffeine, but if I have I pretty much will try to stay clear of it unless I'm basically like driving on a road trip and I got to be in the car for more than a few hours, you know, but if I have more than one cup of coffee in a day or even have coffee two days in a row, yeah, my chest will be hurting. So I pretty well steer clear of it. It's not a, that doesn't do me too much good. But you found out you're not the only one. So 30 other million Americans out there suffer from something very similar. Are all their symptoms yeah. like the same? Like they all tend to have the same type of reaction or they all just have different different. So, so let me kind of clarify in any kind of heart ailment, heart disease, like they all get lumped into heart disease. Right. So mm -hmm. even and they even consider if you have um, high blood pressure, that that's a form of cardiovascular disease. So that that's included in that, too. And there's you know, the the way the standard American diet is and how convenient our lives are, there's a lot of people sitting around with really high blood pressure and, you know, just other things that they're, you know, doing to their body, eating like our, our diet here is, you know, we shit. don't even need to go into detail about it. Yeah, it's shit. Like the, <laughs> and, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Like all you got to do is, you know, just mention all standard American diet and everyone like your mind just goes in terrible places of like the, the stuff that they put in stores. Um, we're but, synonymous yeah, so, with McDonald's, bro. That's what it is. You know what I mean? So all, all, all the people that live at McDonald's, they eat every day. You know, they're a lot of those, <laughs> you know. Got, and when we say McDonald's, we're not saying whatever. just McDonald's, right? We're, 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 we're right. literally saying yeah. when you say McDonald's, we're grouping everybody. Even this delicious yeah, yeah. as In-N-Out is, yeah. right? We're, they're all yeah. together. Yeah. And, and even like those little Debbie snack cakes, all bonbons, whatever you want to sit around. That's garbage that we we left. I, I got to confess. I'm a huge. Well, I'm not going to say. What I'm a fan of, because their workers are on strike right now, and I don't want to give them any publicity. <laughs> but 
Yo, I, I got I got my weaknesses too. <laughs> everybody has them. Everybody has them. All right, so you see this problem that's going on, and and you realize that I'm not the only one. There's other people who need this this uh, problem solved. So you came up with what? Uh, date coffee. So date coffee is super healthy for you. It's great for uh, digestion. It can help regulate your blood sugar. It's great for your brain health, your skin. Um, it has natural energy. It's full of antioxidants. <clears throat> so it's literally like the perfect way to start your day with something that's actually healthy. And it's also non-acidic. So if you suffer from, you know, Garrett acid reflex or whatever it may be, or if you're on an alkaline diet, that's getting really popular now. So, it, you know, it kind of fits into all those. And, you know, I started making this because I gave up caffeine. I was kind of looking for a replacement. And it was kind of funny how just everything fell into place, right? So I was, you know, I just happened to be a person who eats a lot of dates. And I found myself throwing away a lot of seeds and just Google one day, what can I use these for? And you can turn them into coffee. Um, hmm. So I started making it for myself all the time. And I got tired of making it for myself. I was like, man, I just want to buy this in the store. And there was, I couldn't really find it anywhere. So I was like, okay, here's an opportunity for me to provide something that I love for other people who are looking for what I was looking for. And, you know, I, I'm not here to, you know, try to convince anyone to not drink coffee. I know a lot of us love, love our caffeine. Um, but if, you know, if, if you're looking for something um, or if, you know, your doctor told you to cut back on the coffee, then, you know, Korma, Korma is your answer. And yeah, sorry, that's what it's called, Korma with a K. So it's K-O-R-M-A. You can find it at KormaCafe.com. But yeah, he healthy coffee, safe for pregnant women, nursing mothers, all that. So it's, you know, it's got carbs. So unless you're on the keto diet, but you know, they're healthy carbs. So <laughs> it's all Dude, good. The, uh, the idea of, of using what you were already eating, that's, that's uh, amazing in and of itself. Tell me like, cause I, 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 when you're talking about, you know, fighting that fight of trying to get people to not drink coffee, that's, that's a never ending battle. Like in my house, dude, I drink water. I'm not, I'm not a coffee drinker. Yeah. I'm not anything like that, but everybody yeah. else in my house is like, you yeah. can't. And then I yeah. work at a high school in the mornings, dude, all the teachers, you can't get <laughs> through a day I, I like through the morning without that. Like it's part I of, it's know. essentially part of their life. So it's, it's, it's part what, of American culture. So yeah, know, dude, it, it kind of, you know, you're exactly this, right, dude. And then Sorry, and the, the thing, no, no, okay, my bad, my bad. So, so <laughs> um, my question to you is: is when they make the shift, I wonder is it is it completely different feeling, or is it kind of like well, you know, at least we have something warm in the morning. Like, what's the, wh how do you feel yeah. when you're when you're grinding up uh, your dates and, and using those as coffee? So for me, it was you know, I I, I just love having a hot drink in the morning. It doesn't have to have caffeine in it. as long as it's not something or like chamomile, rose hips, or something that's gonna make me tired. You know, I, I love coffee. And I love the taste of coffee. I love the smell of coffee. Um, coffee just doesn't love me back the way I love it. So I'm in this kind of <laughs> weird triangle relationship with coffee and date coffee. <laughs> and but yeah, so the date coffee, like we actually add to ours a little bit of chicory root to it, which is a really healthy. It's a dark herb. It's kind of it's in the dandelion family, but it's super good for you. And they actually use it in uh, New Orleans a lot. It's super popular for people in New Orleans to put in their coffee or just drink it straight as coffee. Um, but it pairs like really well with the <clears throat> the date seeds. So, you know, the recipe that we have isn't isn't too heavy on the chicory, but it balances the date seeds really well. So you get a pretty good, bold flavor that's probably closer to coffee than any other coffee alternative I've had. And I've had, you know, quite a few of them and some of them are really good, but they don't taste like coffee. Um, and so, you know, that was another part of it, too, was I didn't just want, you know, a morning drink that was hot. I wanted something that tasted like coffee that I could, you know, pour a little, put a little honey in, a little creamer, sweeten it up and get that sweet, creamy coffee that I like to drink. Right. Um, but it, it gives you sustained energy. Like if you woke up in the morning and, you know, ate some fruit, you know, if you ate an apple and, and a date, whatever, you, you know, give you real energy to help wake you up. Um, but you're not going to get that crash. You're not going to get that any kind of jitter, any kind of anxiety. So I know for like me personally, <clears throat> I was never a huge coffee drinker because caffeine never really did it for me anyway, even before it was, you know, giving me chest pain. Um, it always made me feel a little bit anxious not uncomfortably anxious like i would still drink coffee every now and again just because i like the taste so much um and like decaf is okay but it doesn't taste as good like i, th I think we all kind of know that <laughs> but also a lot of coffee companies use a really nasty process to decaffeinate their coffee beans um some use a process called the swiss water method which if you're going to drink coffee you should kind of look into it and make sure they're using that method because that's a lot cleaner but if they're not using the swiss water method it's typically some sort of sol solvent that's, you know, heavy on chemicals 
that, you know, essentially, you know, to soak a coffee bean in something else to get the caffeine to come out of it, you know, you, you got to use something like kind of nasty to make that happen, right? Something invasive. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and coffee companies don't really tell you which one is which. So you got to kind of do your own research um, if you're going to drink decaf coffee. But for me, it was like, I don't want to, you know, deal with any of that process. So the date coffee was great. And it's, it's non-acidic. And like I said, it's, you know, super healthy between digestion, your skin, your brain. It's heart healthy if I'm drinking it. Um, so yeah. what about that? What about the big question everybody wants to know? Like, I know in my household, it's like routine. You finish your cup of coffee, you go to the bathroom. Like, that's just, you know, what yeah. happens when you when you when you have a uh, regular coffee? Yeah. Does it help clean you out or keep you in, uh, you know, on pace on on the uh, good old number so, two there? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really rich in fiber. So it's going to give you a more healthy number two than than a typical cup of coffee, because coffee is a stimulant. And so when you have stimulants, like that's why, you know, a lot of cigarette smokers like that, you know, go to the bathroom more often because the the nicotine is a stimulant like that too. So it's kind of a natural laxative. So it, it'll help clean you out, but in, in a little bit more of a healthy way because it's so rich in the fiber and, you know, the things that are actually going to help, you know, grab on to the nasty things that are in your gut and your colon. So that's what you want the fiber for because otherwise you're kind of fleshing out a lot of liquid. And, and that can be beneficial too in its own way if that's what you need. But, you know, for a really solid, you know, healthy bowel movement you want it solid right um to, to that's what's really clearing you out is the when it's you know <laughs> hey man but coffee that, helps dude graphic. <laughs> coffee it's does right. help. I mean, you, you can make it nice dude you can go like yeah. all you know i don't know pg style and be like well this is what we call a poo it'll help you <laughs> take a poo like comfortably right i yeah. mean poo's a, a bear anyways all right, dude. So uh, tell me a little bit about the company itself. Where are you? Like, uh, you know, how long did you start it? Where are you currently uh, as a business? So I started it almost a year ago. I started it. Um, actually, it'll it'll be a year on Tuesday. This coming Tuesday will be a year. Congrats. And so I started it, you know, I, I literally started it in my kitchen. And then it kind of took off, you know, a little bit faster than I thought it would. Um, and then, you know, I was like, okay, how do I quit making this stuff in my kitchen because I can't, you know, <laughs> keep doing this. Like there's restrictions and rules and whatever. But so I, I found a coffee company <clears throat> to link up and uh, agree to they do everything for me. They they roast my coffee beans or my sorry, my date seeds. Um, they, they roast my date seeds. They grind them. They package it. They do all that. So now at this point, like I, I just focus on selling and I'm trying to, you know, make a couple other deals happen. So I've been doing mostly direct to consumer. Um, so on our, you know, cormacafe.com, that's where most of our business comes from. But I also have, you know, a handful of stores that are kind of scattered across the country. Um, mostly health food stores, um, and kind of specialty shops and things like that. And, but yeah, it's just, I haven't got into any of those bigger chains yet. Cause I'm working on a distribution deal right now to make those happen because a lot of, a lot of bigger chain grocery stores. So if anyone who's like listening, maybe wants to launch a product or anything like this to get picked up in stores, like most of the big ones pretty much always require you to go through a distributor and there's other hoops that you got to jump through too like sometimes they want free product like for their first stock their first case is free and things like that and so there's just you know a lot of things you got to make happen so that's what i'm trying to make happen at the moment and i have a couple people that i've you know linked up with that are trying to help with that but yeah so right now you know a, a few stores i'm probably you know i'm in a few different cities in california um, I got, I'm in a, actually a chocolate shop in Beverly Hills. Um, nice. I'm in Edgewater, New Jersey, which is like right across from, uh, New York city, right, right on the river. I'm in, um, Arlington, Texas, um, St. Louis, Missouri, Eldon, Missouri. I'm, I'm from Missouri. So I'm in like a couple other stores like that there, but this, you know, those small boutique shops, but, um, Bro, yeah, but you're so, like Tupac. You get around. Like I'm, I'm trying, here. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying. So, you know, and, and that was all, you know, most of those deals came from some of those stores reached out to me and were like, hey, I just happened to come across your product. I want to, you know, put this in my store. And some of them are like that. Some of them I reached out to. Um, but I, I found that that's like an easier way to start and to help generate some revenue aside from, you know, just doing direct to consumer. And like that, that's going good. Um but, you know, to you can always, you know, do extra. So that's, you know, it also helps, you know, bring in more money. And as a business owner, that's what we're here for is to make money. Right. You know, along with whatever our mission is, whether it's, you know, helping people who are, you know, like me or whatever anyone else's mission is. Um, but, you know, we're still trying to 
you know, make money so we can expand. And, you know, the, the more the more we expand, the more people we can help. Right. Because there's people out there looking for this that haven't haven't found it yet. Um, so just kind of taking it step by step and, you know, also taking what what comes at the same time and just, you know, do doing everything you can to make it happen. But it's, you know, a lot of, you know, have, having smarter people around you, I think, is probably the best thing we can do in business. Right. Is just learn from people who have you know done things already similar, doing it. trying to do yeah so or or made, made the mistakes that you're trying to avoid <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's wisdom right there that's the best way yeah. to, to lay it out all right so what is what is the next level look like to you like if you can see yourself right now standing at that next spot you're looking up to edit right now what does it look like in your business so right now it looks like the next step for me is getting into a lot of these chain restaurants in Southern California. So if anyone who's from Southern California, like your Ralph's and your Air One and your Sprouts Market, like those type of places that really have a big presence on in Southern California, and then and then kind of go from there, expand in the rest of the Southwest, go up the coast, and I'm you know trying to work on something to happen on the East Coast right now. I don't want to talk about it too much and jinx it, <laughs> but um yeah and, and that's just from networking uh, you know a lot of the people that i talked to it was just you know th that are actually helping me be in the position that i'm you know trying to get in you know it was I, I didn't reach out to them directly i happened to reach out to somebody else who happened to be like oh well you know that's i like what you're trying to do so i can't really do much for you but try to reach out to this person and see what they say maybe they can they're probably in a better position to help you than me and so it's a lot of that so i think you know, when we get into any business, it's it can kind of be overwhelming when you look at because when you start, you kind of you want to take it step by step, but you also are forced to look at the totality of everything, right? So you kind of wonder, like, man, how am I going to make these connections? How am I going to get in touch with these people? And then it's like you just start talking to other people, and they introduce you to the right people, right? Yeah, I mean, every and and that's the thing is you started making sales, like that's the mm -hmm. that's the that is the number one problem that a company has when you're when you're first taking off that looks mm -hmm. to be successful is mm -hmm. is they're not really doing anything and you're starting to score sales and then you have to solve that next problem like the first problem mm -hmm. you described was how do i get out of my kitchen i can't be making this stuff, <laughs> yeah. right yeah. so you know the, the fact that you had enough orders to get to that point mm -hmm. put you in a position where you had to solve that next problem yeah. and now you know you're you're it sounds like you're moving on to that next step moving on to yeah. that next step as the next problem uh, approaches yeah. so what what is probably what, what's the hurdle the obstacle that's standing in your way from reaching that goal that you just described um i i think part of part of it is sales definitely and part of it is also um I'm, I'm i'm learning as i go and you know i didn't know anyone who worked in you know the consumer goods space and even before this like i'd started businesses before but everything i had done was and, and even that I'm still doing is, you know, business to business because I do animation. I have an animation company with my brothers. And so we produce cartoons and do animated segments for people. But that's, you know, a completely different realm than trying to sell straight to a consumer. Right. Um, <clears throat> but even now, it was like I, I think my biggest obstacle right now, aside from sales, because that that's, you know, o always coming and always doing well. So my a, a bigger obstacle and I say sales also because sales is always an obstacle, I feel like we i can always find new ways to reach people right yeah um so it's like just always top of mind but i, th I think the biggest thing right now is just un unsurety of the, of the exact moves right now and mm. but that's you know what i go to i'm talking to i got this guy on the east coast who's kind of helping me navigate this and what it looks like to get into stores he's a broker and um and i have someone on the west coast in san francisco who has this program basically for you know consumer packaged goods like mine to kind of she acts as a mentor and basically gives you a step by step step by step guide on how to do this so and this is something i just kind of started to jump to was like this kind of massive expansion as far as you know it was always something that i wanted to do but now it just feels like the time to really start you know taking the steps to put myself in position to make those big moves because I can't make those big moves until I'm knowledgeable enough about how to make them correctly. Mm. You think uh, you think it's a fear thing or like well, what, what's your biggest hesitation on on like making one of those decisions? Yeah. So so right right now I'm not hesitant anymore. Now now it's just it's learning the correct moves to make because there's you know this is a thing that's like to get into these big chain stores there's 
like I said, there was just kind of hoops and things to jump through. And I, I think, you know, at first fear was a thing for sure, because like looking back on it, I'm like, oh, I should have been, I should have made these moves like a few months sooner for sure. The moves that I'm making right now, because the moves I'm making now are like the moves that are putting me, you know, where I'm going to want to be like real soon. And so, yeah, I, th I think it was fear. I think there was this fear of what, what if I go all in right now and it, it, it doesn't work? What, you know, I make the wrong moves and I, I lose all this money that I've made and I, you know, invest it incorrectly in my company. So I think that that was a big fear that held me back for quite a while of, you know, but, you know, that's something you just kind of, it was like, okay, it's now or never. Like now, now I have to go all in. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> you just, you just, you just kind of have this sense of like now's the time, right? Or maybe it's not even a sense of now's the time. It's maybe it's like, just do it already. <laughs> Whatever. I think, it, maybe, yeah. I, I think it's be. more of the, I think it's more of the, just do it already. I think, yeah. you know, yeah. we all suffer from that idea of, of like, what happens if I, if I mess up, but you know, one yeah. activity that I, that I've, uh, I've been a part of a number of different times with different coaches and mentors is like they go through this activity and they're like, look, if you're worried about making that decision, let's talk about what is the worst case scenario that can happen. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of yeah. lay out those things like, oh, dude, I might spend all this money. I might have to move in with my parents. I might have to sell my car and take yeah. the bus, right? Like you start laying out all the, the bad stuff that, that mm -hmm. could happen. And then at the and when, when that's done, that's your worst case scenario. Yeah. And then you flip it and you go, okay, well, what's the best case scenario? Oh, dude, I can land this big account. Um, yeah. It's possible that I can make, I can be making this amount of money. I would be able to pay off my debt. I'd be able to buy my house. Like you start playing it out and you're like, okay, well, I know what the worst case scenario is. Like I can name it. Mm -hmm. I can visually be there. And chances are, I'm not going to go that far. Yeah. I'll make a mistake here and there, but I ain't going to yeah. go that far. Mm -hmm. So it's in my favor to go more towards that positive route. Like, like mm -hmm. that's one of those hesitations that I think uh, as we start businesses, especially the ones that become successful, uh, mm -hmm. we're not used to having that income come in we're not used to having those orders come in at, at a regular pace that we want to and then we start looking back like oh shit what if that what happens if that account disappears what yeah. happens if that account doesn't <laughs> yeah. work right what if yeah. i say something wrong and then mm. that hesitation stops us from growing mm. so like dude you're you're made you've made some awesome moves man i mean mm. you're alive first of all i love that the <laughs> fact that you you have that from the yeah. that perspective from the beginning like you're looking at yeah. things completely differently in life yeah like what are you scared of now shit yeah and, and i oh. think like <laughs> right and uh i think now you know it, it was i think that was what i went to was you know what's the worst case scenario so you know recently you know before i you know made the decision to jump all the way in so i jumped like all the way in on seo and i'm about to jump like all the way in on inventory and everything else like that right to you know really make you know a couple things happen and then you know i got you know my, my next couple moves planned out too but um i think you know just having that thought of, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I, I had that thought and it was literally, okay, the worst that can happen is if if this and this and this fails, the things that I'm doing right now, then basically I'm going to be back to where I was like shortly after I first started, which except I'm not going to still be making the coffee anymore, which isn't like the worst place to be. <laughs> so right. it's like, it, it feels like, you know, so I might as well, if I'm going to fail, I might hurry up and fail fast because you know, I'd rather be set back, you know, six months instead of, you know, nine months. Right. So, yeah, my, my thought is always, is, yeah, dude, my thought is very similar. I'm always thinking, you know what, if I fail, I fail trying that versus thinking about yeah. maybe someday getting yeah. started. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. That, that's and a huge, I, I that's a book, huge thing. I read this book recently by uh, Steve Sims. It's called Blue Fishing. And the book is just all about making things happen. And that's essentially like kind of how, you know, I try to run any business that I'm involved in, right? It's just, if there's something you want to do, then just try it. And if it fails, you know, fail as cheaply <laughs> as you can. Um, but, you know, it, it was like whenever I launched my coffee. So this is an ep or a, um, example I always talk to about other people is that, you know, when I, when I launched my coffee, this is what it looked like. This is my first coffee bag. This janky, like white paper <laughs> coffee bag i bought these on amazon i bought a 50 pack of them and i sold 49 of them and kept one right and there, there was no seal at the top i just i didn't like send these pins with them it was just this is what you get right this this janky thing with a label stuck on it here i'm trying to get <laughs> that's the but, beginning 
Yeah, exactly. So you just jump in and like you don't have to make it perfect. But now, you know, I've changed I've changed my bags two times. This, so this is my third bag. But now I have like these nice printed gold bags mm. that, you know, they, they look there's a seal. So you reseal it yourself. Yeah. So, you know, this is bag number three. So if I would have waited until I had perfect packaging, I, I would have missed out on, you know, not not only the money that I made selling the other bags first, but feedback that i got from my audience yes. about you know what it would have taken longer to get that feedback so i've changed a lot of things i've never changed the recipe in the classic blend so we got like the classic blend the light roast and we got a toasted coconut and right now we have pumpkin spice but so the the classic blend people were loving it never changed it the light roast people loved it never changed it the toasted coconut people said it didn't taste coconutty enough so i changed it and so like that's you, you don't have to wait until everything is perfect like your your audience or your customer whoever you're you know selling to whether it's you know a physical product or content they're going to tell you what they like and you can you know adjust accordingly so i think it's you know important to always just jump in especially to start yes. you know it, it especially to start you know so my my cartoons you know our production company with my brothers when we first started making cartoons we started on youtube and had no idea what we were doing. We literally taught ourselves how to animate over the course of like a year and a half. And as soon as we were good enough to like basically make the characters move, we started animating episodes and putting it on YouTube. And it was terrible, but it got good. <laughs> <laughs> it was hey, so bad. I feel you, man. Yeah. It was so bad, but we didn't care. Like we were making content and we were making two episodes a week every week and, and working our asses off and just grinding super hard. And six months after we launched our first episode, we had a meeting with Comedy Central in their office in Los Angeles. Oh. That's how fast we were moving to like our first episode was not funny. It was terrible animation. The story didn't even make any sense. But we figured it out like along the way just from making so much content. And then, you know, we, people we, underestimate, dude. They underestimate the power of mistakes. Like, yeah, you know, you, you hesitate so long because you want to try to make things perfect, but you don't realize that the mistakes are really where the goal's at. I mean, that's yeah. what really makes yeah, you super unique to everybody else because yeah. you've already stepped in it. You know, yeah, you want mentors to help you so you don't step in huge holes, right? right. But yeah, you have sure. to get in. You have to get in the trenches and, and make your yeah. own mistakes along the way. Dude, that was a perfect spot right now. Make sure before we head out, uh, we were coming. We were past our thirty minute marker, but that's cool. Um, if people want to get a hold of you or work with you, get grab some coffee, whatever it is that they need. How can they do that? Uh, if, if you want to reach out to me personally, the best place is on Instagram. My handle is at Trenton Hudson. And that's, I, I don't give out my email because there's too much junk in there. It'll, it'll get lost <laughs> in the shuffle. But yeah, in, Instagram is always the best place to hit me. I, I see all those, whether it's a request or not, I see all that. So perfect, perfect. And the website for the coffee? The website for the coffee is cormacafe.com. Get your cormacafe.com. Perfect. Hey, Trenton, man, I, I had a blast getting to know you, dude. You had a great story. You got an even a better product. In my mind, I kept thinking, like, you should make a slogan, a little saying, like, hey, do you want to go on a date? And it just means something completely different. Like, it used to be, like, you want to go for a cup of coffee? Now it just should be, like, hey, you want to go on a date? That's what everyone and, keeps telling me. So if, if everyone's saying it, maybe it's something I got to run with because it's going to make everyone's mind go to the right place. Yeah, yeah, you, you're shaping it a little bit different. And like the story that you tell is nothing but love stories and, and hookups and business meetings. That's what you do on a date, bro. Like that's what you do. You just hook <laughs> up. And it's just a different type of a drink that you got there. All right, man. Hey, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. Real quick, before we head out, what was your experience like on the on the podcast? Oh, man, I had a blast today. And especially for a short podcast, like it, it flew by. And I had a blast and I had a blast getting to know you. And I'm looking forward to checking out more episodes of this podcast because I actually was like a fan of it before I came on. So, you know. Nice, dude. Kudos, nice. Kudos it, to you, my man. I'm going to hit you up too, by the way, about the animation stuff because, I mean, I got my little guys right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know anything about animation, but it would be so cool to be able to animate some of these guys and yeah. some of the concepts that we do. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll be talking a little yeah, bit offline. Yeah, man. All right, ladies and gents. It's Friday, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great rest. Of, you know, a, 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 I'm going to plug this one more time. Cormacafe.com. If Monday's coming around the corner, you know you hate Mondays. I know a lot of you do. And it's probably because you're doing something that's not making you very happy. You want to make a change, make sure you guys go to businessbros.biz. Schedule a 15-minute call with me so I can sit down and talk about your business and see what you need help with. Maybe we can help you out, plug you up with people that are in our network doing some amazing things. Uh, Synergy works. Push 
pushes and catapults you in the in the positive direction. So make sure you guys go to businessbros.biz if you guys want to, to sit down and have a conversation. And for Monday, go to cormacafe.com, order your date coffee. It still helps you go number two, but it helps everything else inside you a little bit better with no caffeine kick. All right, ladies and gents, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, y'all. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the business bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the insurance bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.biz.